So the next 45 minutes we will be speaking about the education in the data processing and before inviting the speakers of this panel discussion I'd like to make a short introduction. I'd like to say that during the last year Ukraine in fact achieved enormous results in the opening of data. During the last year we've got several big registers publicly accessible with which we can work, including the register of court decisions and verdicts out of the state court administration, that's the register of beneficiaries from the Ministry of Justice, Ministry of Education, for the second year it publics the anonymized results of their um, external evaluation and assessment, they still produce the system of Prozoro produces great bulk of open data and the e-data portal does that and big bulks are being published by the Ministry of Internal Affairs so you can say that just now we are having enough of open data with which we can and should work. The question is as follows whether we are having enough of people who are able to work with this data so the success of the opening of the data depends not only on the uh, managers and organizers, it depends on the people who are able to work with this data. It depends mostly on the journalists who are able to find histories in this data, from the analysts who are able to write uh, policy papers uh, knowing this data. It depends on the developers or businessmen who are able to build the products on this data. or on the representatives of the NGOs who are able to use this data for the advocacy or control and monitoring of the government. So, as it seems to me, the skills of the journalists, of analysts or the NGO representatives are rather far from the state when we can really rely upon the broad usage of open data. So, our main question of the today's discussion is which skills are needed to work efficiently with the data and where we can gain those skills. So today with us it will be spoken about oh, by four wonderful experts. Please meet. I'm inviting Anatoly Bandarenko, deputy of the main editor of the internet um, newspaper Texty and he is working with data journalism. He is not only he is put a posting the and and teaching the visualization of data in one of the universities and he's the author of the course on the Prometheus platform. And also I invite Mitro Stapchuk, the analyst of the data from the Office of Efficient Regulation. You can note Metro because of his materials on the platform of Vox Ukraine. He's using the machine learning and analysis of social networks to an anal to analyze the work of the banks. Besides that, Metro is one of the authors of the course How to Write About Economy Without Mistakes, which was created in the framework of the Kyiv School of Economics and Vox Ukraine. And also I invite Oleksiy Rybanovsky, the analyst of the Kyiv School of Economics. Oleksii has a very interesting story of transformation from the classic journalist who is writing about economy to the prof uh, professional who writes about visualization and analyst of the big data. And we will speak today about that too. And I invite here Oleksii Molchanovsky, who is the head of the Magister Program of Data Science in the Ukrainian Catholic University. It seems to me it's the first program of data science of the Magisters in Ukraine. So this year there was the second set of students who began their studies and Oleksi together with colleagues organized the summer and winter schools on data science or on machine learning. So Oleksi is a co-founder of the resource Prometheus in the framework of which last year we had a specialization of analysis of data. So meet them. So I'd like to begin our conversation on finding out the typical skills which are needed to work with the data. My first question is for Anatoly. What's this typical uh, 
typical tasks when, for instance, your team of taxi is working with uh, uh, registers of beneficiaries or any other, what are the te technical tasks or terms of reference you need to solve? Well, mostly we need to solve all of the spectre of tasks which is included into the analysis, beginning with the first uh, stage when we gather the data in some format, if they're not in the open data form later on. The most time-consuming is the cleansing of this data. Some of the universal format, when you have to throw away the duplication, when you have to define the links or the names, addresses of the people, and the last stage is connected with the analysis. The analysis can be in very different types and forms, both in a visual form and as a certain statistical modeling, to find what's interesting in this data. So you can say that we're having a certain spectrum of tasks to gather data, data management, as their storage, and some database processing, which could be both text analysis and the work with uh, bulks of text and volumes of texts and uh, analysis with the statistical results and machine learning, right? Yes, yes, totally. So knowing your own, my own experience working in Texty or UA, it has a certain educational period when the journalist or the developer before going well, working has to get to know whether this new tool or new methodology it can be used. How much time does it take? And how could you systematize this process? Everything depends on uh, the level of complicatedness of the projects. Well, sometimes my our colleagues uh, already have some basic set of skills, so they can do it from the beginning on their own without the educational period. But if the project is uh, complicated and we need some technical infrastructure and some new process of problems, processes of processing of the data, it can take months, weeks or months in case of the projects which are still being developed is the texts on different websites, English-speaking sites. It's a very complicated text infrastructure, so we needed to adjust all of the stages we've mentioned now, we've listed, so we needed a person who is intensely working with natural language processing, that is NLP, so he's trying to use different algorithms to analyze and to deal with those enormous bulks of text data. It's very individual. I will tell you again, it can take both weeks or months, but mostly someone is helping or at least telling which direction to move for in the when people have certain experience in this sphere. Besides, we are having a very good tendency, a very nice process in the addition, I mean internal seminars, which we are holding for our colleagues. We don't have a certain period for that, but still, it's happening once in several months, something is interesting is going on when people get to know something interesting from the people who already know something. Still, Texty or QA is an exceptional thing. The text is a media laboratory in the framework of which you can spend some time working on the project and starting something new. How could you... How could the journalists do when they don't have such an opportunity? The journalists which are working in some different commercial media, how can they ca take grasp of all those new technologies without stopping to work? I think that Alexei can answer better. He has some practical experience of such work. But it seems to me that in this case everything depends on the personal wish of the person and motivation of the people. If we've got some motivation, the person will be able to find certain time and resources to create many projects on, on their own. I'm sure that personal many projects which are not connected with the work you are performing to study something new is the best way to take grasp of the new edges 
of this specialty. And of course the second point is we will hope that more and more editors' offices will deal with journalist data. There will be more places for people, for the journalists to practice it in real life. But you are teaching a lot, both for the journalists and the NGO representatives. What do you think is interfering in the process of getting the main skills and in data processing? I can speak about that in our, for hours. It's a very interesting question. Let's better speak what doesn't interfere, because mostly those are people who are coming from the IT technology or some other technical specialty. Those people can be humanitarians and they're trying to find out something new for themselves. They just lack some basic education. This is the first which bothers them, which interferes them. Um, the second thing is that we don't have lots of places where to use this knowledge. Online courses is very good, but if you don't use it in everyday life, there won't be any sense to do that. So, in a way, I think that there is a lack of places where you can give at least a, a bit of systematic course on this direction, I mean uh, data analysis. I know only two places like that, maybe I'm mistaken, but it seems to me it's a Kyiv Mohila Academy and I can uh, for sure say that it's a Ukrainian Catholic University. So I can say that the journalists can have this course, they can get acquainted with the programming and to know what's the journalism of data and analysis of data. We don't have the total absence, but this market is very small. A very small quantity of specialized courses and programs, training courses. Maybe this is the biggest reason that it's difficult to study this sphere. You mentioned an interesting sphere uh, uh, that mostly humanitarians try to do that, but in your editor's office you have the uh, totally different case, when the classical developer came to the journalism. So what do you say, how possible it is to take the developers, I mean the technical developers and IT guys, into journalism? If we speak about the examples I know, of course, we need non-material motivation. The motivation should be stronger, because the material motivation is we can't compete with the IT sector. It's, of course, unilateral opinion. So the people who are coming from the IT sphere to the visualization of data, to the journalism, they have to be really motivated why they are doing that. Some different reasons, some non-material, not money motivation. I'd like to join uh, Alexey Grabanovsky to join our uh, discussion because Alexey has a very interesting way from the classical journalist in Forbes magazine to the visualization uh, data of data work up to the analysis of big box of data, big data in the Kiev School of Economics. Could you tell us a bit about your evolution in the field and where did you gain this knowledge? Hello everyone. I'd like even to answer this question a bit wider. I am an economist, so I graduated uh, from the... We, we didn't have the word uh, econometrics in my, uh, during my education path. But in Kiev School of Economics, the Magister Program of Economics is econometrics itself. It's the beginning of the machine learning, the analysis of data with the help of R, it's a totally new approach to the education in economy. Why am I saying that? Because even 20 years before, the economic education had a huge transformation. Now it's not enough to know what's the targeting and volatility and so on, different economic theories. Now you have to know how to work with the data. If before that the economist used to be a classical humanitarian, now it's more of the 
technical specialty where you have to work with the IT programming and the same happens with the journalism. Nowadays it's not enough just to write the text, it's not enough to have the skills of the epistolary. It's necessary to become a programmer a bit, to know how to work with the data, to uh, be uh, in the pace of the time and to the create the data-driven story, the story which is built upon data. I was studying when we had the total lack of information. Anatoly was uh, totally right because the main thing is motivation. My motivation began with a five-minute video on YouTube, the Hass Rosenberg uh, TEDx lecturer. I saw this speech and I understood that I want to deal with data, how to study and how, uh, w what spheres we should use. This is the matter of motivation. But when I began to deal with that in 2011, and now is a totally different time. There are thousands of courses, hundreds of translated into Ukrainian, Prometheans emerged. We have all of the opportunities, there are lots of ways, the main thing is motivation, that's it. But in your case, when you began this, uh, okay, uh, this path, you tried to get to know from the textbooks without any additional environment. Yes, yes, we have the Catholic University, we have Mahila Academy, but still I'm sure that if we are speaking not about the primary education but about the post-education or about the change of specialization or the requalification, the economist who wants to work with the data or from any other branch, the best way is self-education because mostly People don't wake up and just think, oh, I want to become an analyst of data and you need to overcome the whole path. Why well, think that the classical manager just faces some of the challenges in his specifics with some new challenges which are connected with the data, so he has to be taught how to deal with them. I don't think there is the sense to study all of that together. I think there's sense to find a certain specialization and to find the response on the question he has in this uh, in his work. In 2011 not a single journalist had a necessity to work with some data sets, but now there is such a task in any editor's office. This task emerges every day and every week. So it's logical that the today's journalist, the whole editor's office has to have some educational course but not to get some programming course, but just to try point-wise uh, to study something to work with the data sets, with the registers. So you used to be one of the lecturers, one of the authors of the investigation journalist in Ukrainska Pravda, Ukrainian Truth, where you told about big data usage in journalism. How do you think? Do we have any substantial effect of these courses of these training courses, or their aim is totally motivational, but the majority of the work will be performed by people on their own according to their textbooks. Well, knowing my experience, I can tell that when I began the studies, the tuition, I didn't know what HTML is. I had a very distant understanding of that. So I was working, unfortunately, the other way around. I, I wanted to understand some library without understanding the script. That's why I spent lots of time without knowing the stages of the proper tuition. So I lost lots of time because of the non-systematic approach. That is why any educational courses, the thematical and specialized, are really useful, because they can give the proper rhythm, the tempo and consequence of the tuition process. But in the 90%, the result is only depends on motivation and the education on your own. There are millions of opportunities online. The task of this course is to give the proper rhythm, tempo and consequence. And so I'd like the, uh, the, uh, to Dmitro to join our conversation because Dmitro is one of the authors of the course on how to write about economy better. And he's the lecturer 
in the framework of the module of uh, data work, data processing. I'd like to understand how do you construct this training course, which problems you try to solve with it, and which kind of, time, oh, kind, kind of knowledge and skills to give to the listeners. There will be two parts, online school and offline school. The main idea is to write something about economy, you need to know at least the basics of the economic theory. I'm not a journalist myself, but the editors-in-chief of some of the publishing houses, they say that the quality of the journalism is not that high they wish it to be. Especially it concerns the economic and uh, sphere closed economy. So the main aim of these courses is just to rise the qualification, to increase the qualification of the journalists. And in the framework of this course, there will be the course of data analysis. Because when we enter the sphere of data analysis, is rather demanding. Because you have to be a universal person. You have to know lots of things. You have to know how to program, you have to communicate with the reader, you have to know how to gather data, and that is why Ukrainian media, maybe as it seems to me, so far they don't see how the investments into journalists will finally work. Uh, they finally pay off. Andrew recently shared the piece of news which tells us that uh, the Google research which tells us that American and European media they use about data in 40 to 50 percent. It's about twice a week. I asked myself a question how many media or at least journalists in Ukraine are using that? I would say only five percent. We have to increase this critical mass and that is why we shall try to issue those two schools, both online and offline. This is what's done by Kyiv School of Economy and Vox Ukraine. We'll have lecturers on finance, on macroeconomics, microeconomics. Those are the people who have got the PhD, who are working in the financial sector. This won't be some economic theory, the first course of the university. By the way, we graduated from the same university, I didn't know that. So, it will be more of a practical school. But still, which skills and knowledge would you like the students to have? What would you like to have as a result? What does people have to know how to do practically? Can I, can I interrupt? As a representative of lots of editors' houses, I can for sure say that 90% of the journalists uh, can, uh, don't know what's the difference between the middle median. Yes, it is done. Yes, it is, it is written in the description of the course that Dmitry, uh, Dmitry will teach. Yes, I will lead the model on data analysis, and the main idea is to give a certain introduction into statistics, the basics, uh, some of the divisions, median, medium, a standard deviation. These things are really used in the media. If you read New York Times, my favorite media file 38, which is writing about politics, they are writing about that from the point of view of the data. That is why the pools were totally improper in the beginning, because the division and how these pools were constructed, the methodology was wrong. That is why the New York Times gave 99% of Trump win. But then they say that, guys, there is a systematic mistake you are not taking into consideration. So far, I don't see this, content, this kind of content in Ukraine, but I'd like to see it. That's why I need to go abroad and to read some of the leading materials there. But it's more about the understanding of the, med of the data which we will be working with, but still there are some of the technical tasks we will have to solve. For instance, we're having the e-data portal or Prozora portal, and there is a simple question how to get data from it. I understand. Maybe you're pushing me to answer whether we should teach people how to gather data, API, and so on. Well, unfortunately, in the framework of the online course, we didn't foresee it. But still, there are certain lessons how to work with Excel. I will defend Excel. 
up till the end. I have some of the acquaintances who try to say, well, they don't like Excel, I would say. But every year this soft becomes more progressive, and if you know how to use it, it's a very powerful tool in the hands of the journalist. Of course, I would like some people to study on Python, but it's not in the framework of the course. The basic things in the Excel are considered there. How to use them, how to create the basic graphics, and how to count through main metrics. This is the technical and political part. Okay, and finally, I'd like to speak with Oleksii. I've got lots of questions about data science and education in Ukraine, but still I'd like to understand what was the motivation when you created the Magister program on data science in the Ukrainian Catholic University, and what were the aims and tasks considered there? In which case did you form the program knowing which requirements? Hello, everyone. If I am honest, what was the motivation to create the program at the Catholic University in Lviv? My motivation was the only one. For 10 years I've been working at the Kiev Polytechnical Institute and I saw how the state education is not feeling well in the high education institutes. So I asked myself whether the high quality technical engineer magister programs can exist in Ukraine which will exist further on. We have a wonderful example of Kiev School of Economy, but still I have a question as I have an IT background and in a Ukrainian Catholic University we had the um, idea of the whole, the whole department of the sciences in the Catholic and it was the first engineer department. I communicated with the people and they invited me to come. What should I do there? Data science. Why data science? Because I was dealing with that for a couple of years here in Kiev, uh, in Kiev Polytechnical Institute. The summer school was one of the trends was data science, so I was already doing that a bit, and of course the crazy demand, because Ukraine didn't have a single program about that before. I wouldn't like to say that we were the first program, there used to be some other programs, and they still exist. They uh, try to develop themselves, and that's very good in the state universities, but we tried to show some other examples how to involve the practices of the best institutes of the US and Europe. First of all, when I said to, to work with this program, I just went, I googled the best programs in the world. I saw them in Stanford, in MIT and other universities. So I finally decided to work how to solve the business tasks. Only now we have the second set of our magisters. As I'm telling you, the demand is really great. They are taking these places really quick. But I will agree with my colleagues, which would say, especially with Oleksi, that you don't need to spend a year and a half to the magisters program if you want to get to know something. That is why we're having different formats. This is the summer a fortnight camp or two weeks camp, which is a very cool uh, format. We had the representatives of Text.org UA last year and this year. Those are lively projects which grew up after those summer schools. What's the educational landscape of data science today? You having new programs both in Lviv, Kharkiv and Kiev, and do they satisfy the needs of the market, or maybe we need more of them. The market is developing very quickly. When we created the program in Lviv, it was the age between the 2015 and 16, how we created this program. We invite the representatives of the business, of local companies and enterprises, the directors and owners, and we are communicating with them. We want to do this and that. And they told us, oh, there is no such uh, need of data scientists. It was the beginning of 2016. But later on, in a year, they they opened the offices of R&D company in Lviv, in Kyiv. The bigger companies and corporations are opening them in Kharkiv and Odessa. That is why the educational landscape couldn't catch up, even from the point of view of the market. I'm speaking at least about business, not NGOs and other branches. If we took IT only, we're having an enormous problem that, in fact, 
there's it's not the challenge to take some program and to copy it and to make it and execute it at our place we're having only one teacher the most complicated is to find a proper person he's our professor professor all of the rest are invitees mm, those are people from abroad either ukrainians who are teaching abroad or the foreigners themselves because to find high quality professionals who know how to teach is small, almost unreal in Ukraine so every time when the new program is opening I am glad because there is certain movement but still there is a question who will be the teachers who the teachers will be if they take a certain professor and they say, tell him you have to prepare a new course on machine learning or data analysis or data visualization he's just taking a textbook, a classical textbook, typical one, and it will be good if it's textbook, it's at least in English. Okay, how much can you compensate this lack of teachers of online education? Last year you issued this track of analysis of data. What was his result? Do you see any perspective in that with the scaling of the education in the data sphere? Of course, online platforms is a nice multiplier, but the question, as it was correctly mentioned, we have the lack of this practical feeling. You can come, you can solve certain questions, you can pass the course, but the work with the real projects, that's what we lack. How to scale it is still a challenge for me. We have a different format of hackathons, challenges on open data. I'm really glad that these things are working because they appeal attention of people. So it seems to me uh, seems to me that we are w moving in the right direction. The question is the speed and the scaling. As for how to teach the teachers, honestly, I don't have the positive question on for this question. It's really complicated. I haven't still found the answer that that is working, and we will teach everyone very quickly. It's like bringing up the child. It ne it consumes time. So, in fact, we're having here two sides of the spectrum of education in data. There are people who would like to do something, but they lack skills. And we have students from the data science who have skills, but they are not for sure working with open data. How could we encourage your students in working with open data? Do you practice anyhow the usage of open data in any of your courses? How could you connect these two sides? Well, it's always our program is very uh, practice driven. We don't have even exams or tests. We're having only projects, projects, and projects. We had the teacher from Canada, an introduction to data science course, and as a project, he offered the participants in the international contest of Business School of Queen's University in Canada. Last year, our students took the third place there. Last year, it used to be six Canadian companies of retail Canadian banks, Montreal Bank, for instance, and each company gave its case. This year, and if we have students here in the audience, everybody can take part in that. The main thing you have to, uh, you must have the status of the student. So they apply up till the 6th of October, by the way. So they take the case from the UN, they cooperate with the UN. The case is named Food Security. They offer their own data and they're saying you can come with your own data and give certain solutions. So. It's a very nice example, I will repeat myself. Hackathons, contests and challenges. We're having nice um, initiatives about the opening of the data. There are certain new cases, how to open them correctly. On the level of different cities, we'll have a certain discussion panel devoted to those cases. In Lviv, we are trying uh, to create some of the connections with the representatives of the city, which encourage our students. Last year, we took only 12 students, so it was not working that well but this year we're having the biggest set of students so I hope it will work so it's a kind of a challenge thing competition thing especially if there are some of the money prizes it encourages the students so if we wrap it up if we sum it up for the students of the data science different challenges are much more interesting for them than the data sets on data UA. if some ministry or the national bank just posts their data sets and uh, has some challenge announced, it would be much more interesting, right? 
Well, yes, we could understand with Kaggle, but it doesn't depend on that. We could do it without them. The good promotion is the main thing, and just to show that it's cool, what's the benefit of it is cool. For the students to see that it is really cool, that they can add it to their portfolio in LinkedIn, and just to work in the company in half of the year, just to see that I'm a professional or expert in this sphere. They will be taken very quickly. So just to sum it up, because we're almost getting to the final of our discussion, I'd like to have a certain round, a separate route for each of the speakers. Let's imagine that I am a journalist, beginner, or a representative of certain civil organization, and in front of me there is a certain task to work with the data. It doesn't matter whether the declarations of the state officials or maybe the data of the court register. So which should be my first steps in this profession? What I, should I pay attention to, first of all, and where can I gain the necessary knowledge and skills? Well, online, of course. Googling. You can find the certain trends how to begin. You have to begin with Google, of course, but if to take it seriously, in our editor's office, one of the most efficient ways how to involve new people, as we found out during the recent two years, is not only internships, but something like continuous internship for five, six months. When a person is coming to our editor's office and in a half of the year he is totally different person after that. This is the best way to study and to work with a collective which is already implementing the necessary projects. So from time to time we are having some of these opportunities, so please follow them up. If you're interested in that, please apply. Maybe you will be able to work at our editor's office for half a year with the people who are already experienced. But if we're speaking in the context of the technologies and basic knowledge, what would you advise? What should be paid attention to? I think that, well, at least, this is some of the programming, IT programming stuff. If you know what the cycle for it is, then you know what that is. So you need to circle four, you need to start with the basic programming and then it will get much quicker and easier. What's your acetylxy? I will advise the simplest way, if you don't take part in any of the summer courses, or s is Prometheus. Of course we have some of the basic courses on programming, training courses on different spheres, after studying it you can analyze the data, data analysis and machine learning course and there and both in Google you can find a million of textbooks so there are no problem at all but my own choice is well maybe for someone it's very difficult to study online maybe sometimes offline but I take uh, perceived information from online courses really in great comfort so Prometheus gave all the opportunities for today to easily go along this way and then you have to self-educate Dmitry, well you already spoke about online and self-education I thought that you would uh, you you should I thought that you would mention about Kiev School of Economy I will say about Vox Ukraine and Alexei will speak about the Catholic University I would say that you have to study out of the most experienced professionals the texts, text the Orgue, Kiev School of Economies, Vox Ukraine you can do it along with your studies, but so far our students don't understand what the internship is, how you should work with it and how you should be devoted to it. So I personally was of course self-educating myself, mostly. As for the technical parts, I would insist on certain universalism, universal approach. So you need to move in different directions, how to search for data, gather it, clean the data and to ask the proper questions before you're doing all of that because if you do it and it's still not interesting for everything, for anyone, it will be good for yourself, which is not bad at least but how to communicate with the reader, with the consumer 
If we speak about the technical part, I there is a, an eternal contradiction argument. R or Python? I'm for Python. Python. Well, Excel is a light version. But there is such a data science tech where you have to know how to visualize. There is the JavaScript for web, Python R visualized. And let's not forget about the Excel. It's a very powerful tool, too. Thank you, Dmitro, that you already mentioned the example that it's important to ask proper questions. We are trying at the Magister's program to let the students know not how only how to become good engineers, but to listen to your clients, to your customers. That's why we are having design thinkers courses and some other communication courses and so on. In my opinion, I'd like to mention several points now. First of all, if you are not an IT guy, yes, there is a way to go and to study the course of programming, IT programming, but there is a risk, a high risk, that you will lose the tempo. If it's a technical course, not so many people graduate from it, so you will lose your enthusiasm. So if you are an investigator, a journalist, or an activist, and you want to hold anything from the analysis part, I would better go to the community of those data scientists and tell them, look, I have such a question. I have an assumption where I can get the data from, maybe even good sources. What would you advise me? So there are people there who know that if you are an, even if an IT guy and earning a lot and you're sitting in an outsourcing company, it's boring for you. So you try to find something else. There are in Facebook certain communities of those people who are just living there. After Kiev, I'm living for Kharkiv. And Andre is going there too. We'll have a huge con a conference of AI Ukraine there. It's the huge uh, gathering of those people where you can get there and find a partner. You will give ideas to him and he will verify your hypothesis. And after that, you will be able to study new things with this person. You can ask him, well, please tell me what cycle for or Python R or JavaScript and so on. What I'd like to wrap up with. I had the whole path with online courses in Prometheus. I'm working in the academic education now. I'm gaining efforts. And there is the key part which is absent in both spheres. It's the institute of mentorship. When there is a person you can come for to get advice and this person will show you how to move. Because there is lots of information. You will ha find the multitude of courses even if you take the specialization of data science or data analysis, our courses at Prometheus, there will be the question where to move forward. So you need a person close to you whom you can ask. Because there are people here whom you can apply for. I can say, please, come to Andrei Gazin or to Anatoly, to Alexei, to Dmitro, and so on. Yes, you can up to, come up to me too, but still I'll send you to some of them. Because I just deal with the management of academic courses. But if you have certain application or request from the systematic studies, for instance, here in the Ukrainian Catholic University in Lviv, we are open for creating short educational programs. If we find at least 15 journalists who want to be professionals in their skills in analytics and analysis, just tell us and we will create this program. We will invite the best people from Ukraine and abroad and at least in a week or in about two weeks you will understand whether you like it or not, whether it's yours or not. You will get some quick result. Okay, thank you. Unfortunately, we're out of time. So summing up, I can say that a person who wants to get to know, to deal with the data, he or she has several ways. It could be online education, it could be various courses which are offered by different institutions like Ukrainian Catholic University or Kiev School of Economics or various local schools and this is the friendship with data scientists and participants in different communities. Unfortunately we don't have time for Q&A session but still feel free to catch any of our speakers during the lunch and ask them a questions. Thank you so much and